Grace and peace be with you. I welcome you to this worship service with the First United Methodist Church of Oakhurst, New Jersey. If you have a candle, I invite you to light it at this time, that together we might celebrate the fact that the light of Christ is in our midst. Will you join with me in the call to worship? For those whose lives are broken by distress, may the God of healing restore you. For those whose lives are broken by fear, may the God of healing restore you. For those whose lives are broken by anger, may the God of healing restore you. For those whose lives are broken by pain, may the God of healing restore you. For those whose lives are broken by illness, may the God of healing restore you. For those whose lives are broken by sin, may the God of healing restore you. Let us take this time in prayer. Lord God, your psalmist writes, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. But we confess, Lord God, that much of the time our hearts feel far from whole. Each day is filled with its own joys and sorrows, each moment beautiful and troublesome by turn. Caught up in the thorny questions of our time, our attention is pulled in a hundred different directions. Uncertainty dogs our steps. The sheer number and depth of needs threatens to overwhelm us. Powerless in the face of so much suffering, fearful that no matter what or how much we do, it will never be enough, we are tempted to withdraw from you, from those around us, from ourselves. So silence the million things clamoring for our attention, great presence, that our hearts and minds may find rest in you. Today we long to be held. We long to be held not by the hateful actions we see on our televisions, not by the virus that continues to take life, not by our divisions and the things which cause us to break apart, Rather, we long to be held by your unbreakable, infinite love. We long to be held by you, that we can take a breath and step away from the chaos swirling around us. And yet we know that we too must do the work to make our community and our world a place filled with your love and your justice. So we ask that you would help us to embody you as we find a way to spread your justice and your love in this world and in all who remain so broken. Guide us, Lord, and deepen our hearts that we might make sure we are embodying your love in every action and in every word we say. And may it begin as we say the words we know by heart. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
join with me in prayer? God of healing, gently touch our lives with your spirit. Bring warmth and comfort, life and wholeness, restoration into fractured lives and souls. Amen. Today's reading is from Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 through 9, a servant song. Here is my servant who I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench, he will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and in the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says the God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I will tell you of them. This is the word of God. It was Lauren's 40th birthday weekend, and she sat listening to the sound of the waves along the Gulf Coast. It was the end of her 30s and she felt like she should have accomplished so much more before reaching this pivotal juncture. She was experiencing a strange and disquieting heartache. Now, according to Lauren, she calls herself of melancholic persuasion. She thinks too openly, feels too deeply, ponders too intensely on all the things. The highs and the lows of any given day kind of grind away at her. She often feels like each day is chipping pieces from her, like, like a seashell caught in the tide. Lauren says that most days she feels more broken than whole. So on the morning of her 40th birthday, she slipped on a pair of flip-flops and made the short trek to the beach. The ocean was rough and restless under a clear blue sky. The sun was shining and her skin felt warm and she made her way to the water's edge. God, she whispered under her breath, it's my birthday, my 40th birthday. I would very much like a little birthday gift, just something simple. She continued, I'm going to look for a seashell today on this beach. Lord, if you could send me just one shell, just one perfect good sized shell, that would be lovely. One perfect shell would be a great symbol for this new year on which I'm embarking, a new decade. Make this moment, this passage new, please. She felt it wasn't too much to ask. But as she began to troll the sand in the edge of the water, she could find no perfect seashells. She found tiny shells, barely the size of a thimble that were still intact, but every shell of any real size was little more than a shard. Every time she'd come upon what appeared to be a big, beautiful shell poking out out of the sand, her heart would kind of flicker with hope and she would reach it, pull it out of the sand only to find a chunk or a jagged piece in her hand and her heart sank. Broken shells all around her, just broken pieces everywhere, here, there. It, it, she realized that the very sand on top of which she stood was nothing more than minuscule bits of shell having been worn and weathered by years and years of being tossed about until all that was left was a grainy dust to be trod upon. 
To her mind, she was walking on a sea of brokenness, just like herself. And that was when she heard it. Above the noise of the crashing waves, speaking to her in the very center of her being, a deep, deep whisper. A whisper that said, broken, yes, and behold, how beautiful. Broken and beautiful. Not but beautiful, not still beautiful. Broken and beautiful. Brokenness was not a detraction from beauty. It was in addition to. And she cast her eyes all about and there were shells everywhere, each of them only bits and pieces of their, their former whole selves. And she realized that she had asked God for a gift of perfection and God had provided exactly what she needed, perfect beauty in imperfection. On her birthday morning, Lauren realized that in God's eyes, that which is broken also holds unparalleled beauty. And she began to gather pieces of shells, honoring their existence as she sensed God honoring hers. Each piece was white clean of debris and rinsed in the nearby water and tenderly secured in Lauren's pocket. Walking along the beach, she picked up as many as she could find, determined to keep each piece of this gift from God, to take them home and be reminded of God's gift of beauty in her imperfection. Friends, you and I live in a world that searches for the perfect. The perfect job, perfect body, perfect marriage, perfect health, perfect grades, perfect life, you name it. We strive for that perfect shell. And like Lauren, we keep ending up being surrounded by that which is broken and imperfect. And we come to God frustrated with our flaws and our pain and our sharp edges. We talk about God as a God of healing. And what we usually mean, even if we don't say it out loud, is God, cure me. Take away my imperfections, my brokenness. Erase my struggle, smooth my edges, and give me the perfect that I seek. We have a tough time with imperfection in our culture. We have a tough time with our brokenness, our own, our own brokenness especially. We become angry at our bodies. We become ashamed of our problems, impatient with that which we call our growing edges. Well, God relates to that brokenness so very differently. There's no anger, no shame. There's no impatience. We look at Isaiah 43, verse Three in particular. In this passage, Isaiah is describing the way of the Lord, the way in which God's servant treats the needs of the world. And verse three reads, a bruised reed God will not break, and a dimly burning wick God will not quench. Hear the tenderness in that phrase. Picture, picture a candle flame barely hanging on, the slightest breeze will snuff it out. That wick's flame is at risk. It's not strong, it's not resilient. Well, how does God respond? God tends to it, protects it, honors it in its fragile state. Picture God cupping God's hands around that fragile wick, a dimly burning wick God will not quench. Or picture the other image in that same verse, a reed, a single stem and it's been bruised, it's been bumped into or stepped upon, and it's limp. God doesn't toss it aside, choosing stronger, healthier, whole reeds. God tends to it, protects it, honors it in its fragile state. A bruised reed God will not break. That is God's approach to brokenness. Brokenness, imperfection, frailty, is given tender care, not rejection. God cherishes that which is broken and does not disparage it in the ways that we so often do. A number of years ago, a colleague was anticipating ordination and she was about to get her first appointment in a local church and one week prior to her very first Sunday in the pulpit, she was the victim of a terrible automobile accident which left her with permanent life-threatening medical struggles. She is now serving a church 
And on one particular Sunday, uh, some time ago, she issued an interesting invitation for an upcoming worship service. At that time, her church email blast stated, if in order to live and go about your regular daily routine, you need medication, injections, breathing treatments, braces, crutches, a walker, and so forth, I invite you to bring them to church this Sunday. We will learn what it is to serve as the body of Christ in broken bodies. She invited them to bring their brokenness. What would you have brought to that service? What have you brought to this service? We all walk through life at some level broken. And I state that not to be morbid, but rather because I found that in naming this truth, this very fact, it can be a freeing thing. It can be a healing thing. We all carry hurts. There are places in all of our lives which we wish were more whole. And there are things about ourselves that we each might desperately want to change. And because of the way our world treats imperfection, we think we need to hide our flaws or deny our problems or keep our wounds from each other and maybe even keeping them from God. But when we get to know God, we discover that God does not expect flawlessness from us. God doesn't turn away from our flaws and frailties saying, come back when you're mended. God is not on a search for a perfect shell. Rather, God holds us just as we are and invites us to look at our brokenness honestly, look at it tenderly. God holds us and shines a light of love on us that invites us to see how beautiful we are as we are like the light shining through stained glass windows. It makes a work of beauty out of what is in essence a collection of broken bits of glass. So God's love shines through us, letting us know how beautiful we are, how loved we are in God's arms. In other words, we realize that not only do we all share in common this state of brokenness, but even more astoundingly, God takes our brokenness and brings out beauty. A number of years ago, I was struggling with one of my own many imperfections and I was sharing my, my anguish with my mother. And shortly after that conversation, she sent me a card and the card included a quote from a Leonard Cohen song. The quote was, ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack, a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. I've come to believe that part of the journey of wholeness involves relating to our brokenness differently than the world does. Rather than hiding it or hating it, there is healing, there is wholeness in owning the story of our brokenness, letting the light get in. What is your story of brokenness? Part of the journey of wholeness is owning that story. How might you do so in the days that come? Is there a trusted friend you could talk with about your feelings of brokenness? Is there a journal that you could write in? Is there some avenue through which you can express your story in a way that feels whole and good for you? Let the light in. What if we stopped searching for the perfect shell the perfect body or life or abilities or situation and looked at our brokenness with new eyes. It's not unlike the Japanese art of kintsuki. Kintsuki is a, an ancient way of mending pottery that really evolved into an art form all its own. When something is broken, it's not tossed out, but rather it's put back together and using gold lacquer, which highlights the cracks and highlights the flaws as it is mended. The artist reconstructs the plate or the cup or the bowl or whatever, making it useful again, but doing so by also emphasizing its brokenness, seeing the beauty in the flaws. Kintsuki captures the fragile nature of life and hidden beauty is revealed. 
This art form holds brokenness in the way that God holds that bruised reed so gently, so lovingly, with honor and reverence. Our artist God acknowledges that life is flawed and messy and oh, so beautiful. A moment ago, I referred to one of Leonard Cohen's songs, but I suspect that most of us are even more familiar with another one of his songs, Hallelujah. Before Cohen's death, he was interviewed about that particular song, and he shared that the song emerged at one of the most broken points in his career. He was suffering from depression, and he said of the time and of the song, I wanted to stand with those who clearly see God's holy, broken world for what it is and still find the heart to praise it. He said, the world is full of conflicts and full of things that cannot be reconciled, but there are moments when we can embrace the whole mess, and that is what I mean when I say hallelujah. His song invites us to embrace the whole mess, just like Kintsuki does. Let the brokenness be held. Let it be honored. Let its story be known. And in the owning of that story, in the honoring of our brokenness, in letting the light in, the beauty comes through. Let us pray. Lord God, help us to stay close to the cracks, to the broken places, to the places where we feel fragile and imperfect. Help us to stay close to the cracks where the light shines in and grass pushes up through concrete. Help us to stay close to the cracks where wounds open doorways to healing and wholeness and life. Amen. Will you receive the benediction? In your brokenness, may God grant you beauty. Amen.